everyone, and welcome back to Fear the Final Girl, a Van Ryder Games podcast. I am your host, Jamie, and today I am not joined by my co-host, Evan, because he's off at a board game convention having fun, although I did just see him post a picture where he was working, so I don't know. He has a weird idea of fun, apparently, <laughs> so he's supposed to be playing board games. But instead of Evan today, I have two special guests. Uh, and that is Max and Doolin from the YouTube channel Table Knots and the podcast Board Game Box Office and two of my besties. So thank Aww. you guys for joining me. Uh, and I'm going to throw it over to you to introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Max from Table Knots and Board Game Box Office. Uh, we've been creating content on YouTube since 2020 and content on all podcast platforms since 2023. Um, coming up on two years in January. We've been good friends with <laughs> Jeff and Jamie uh, at Foster the Meeple for a long time and fans of Van Ryder Games for a long time as well. But more importantly, fans of board games, movies, and all things that we're excited to talk about with you today. And Jamie, I'm, I'm repping the shirt that you got me too. We're so. twinning. We're t- <laughs> oh, we are. We're East Coast best. <laughs> I'm Coast sorry. Where you at, man? I'm sorry. I have a black t-shirt. <laughs> a plain black t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, I'm Doolin, and I do all the things that he said. <laughs> and more these days. And more. Yes. So, yeah, Max and Doolin have been uh, on the YouTube journey with me since the very beginning, basically, and have mm-hmm. dived, dove, I, I never know, is it dived or dove? It doesn't matter, but you Doved. dove or dived into Doved. podcast. You do. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Dylan. That's right. You do. <laughs> uh, and it's been really great. I like save up a lot of your podcasts for when I travel and it's, I just sit on a plane for like six hours and listen to <laughs> you guys bicker with each other. And it's just, it's it. great. <laughs> it's good times. Yeah. It's fun to make too, uh, especially when Doolin's not there. There and we can just like talk is, all about I mean, him that we at want. At least half the time. If and not he more. can't he can't defend himself at all. <laughs> it's really something. Himself. Yeah. It's something something really special that yeah, you have so going on there. Yeah, so now we can talk about everyone else. It's great. So typically now in the podcast, what we do is we talk about what we've been up to lately. Uh, so I'm going to throw it over to Doolin first. So you could talk about a show, a movie, whatever. We often talk about horror-based movies and things because Ooh, just by nature, that, that is... Sense. That is what we do at Van Ryder Games, mm-hmm. but it doesn't have to be that. So you you go ahead and you tell yeah. us what you got going you know, on. I chose something spooky, but it's not a. It wasn't a movie or uh, a TV show. It was a board game, and I hope it's it okay. can be a board game. Cool. Yeah, we talk about um, board games all the time. And this one, this one, I wanted to bring up specifically because I thought you would you would appreciate it, and it's one that mm-hmm. I'm going to try to convince Max to play. Uh, but this is Witchcraft by 25th oh, Century. Yeah. You don't have to convince me much. Yeah. I have it. I just got it in the mail. Oh, Jamie. This game. I haven't played it yet. Is so good. So I was immediately like skeptical of it uh, because I love the original game, which it's based off of Resist. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people like, uh, I think the, I guess the biggest complaint was like, ah, I don't really like the theme. Um, and mm-hmm. this new theme, like everybody loves. And it's, I, I'll admit, it's a really cool theme. It's like, witches in this village who are on trial so like you have actually three people uh that are on the you know jury that you have to convince Mm -hmm. by the end of the game to you know say that you're innocent you're good people to do that you have to complete quests and uh at the end of the game whenever you choose because in this game you're constantly getting weaker uh through using up all of your resources using your cards for their powerful ability Um, and discarding them to say, let's go to trial. We're going to go to trial. We're going to flip over these extra little things that we don't know that add up the amount of convincing you have to do for all three of these people in the Mm -hmm. jury. And if you get two out of the three, then guess what? You get to be in in the village. If not, you're thrown in jail. And uh, that's the game. And in the original, Mm -hmm. it's like, you know, resistance trying to go up against like uh, Francoist Spain and, uh, mm-hmm. And it's cool. I like that a lot. And the this whole concept of do I play a card for its weaker power or play it for its like more powerful power, uh, but then I don't get to use it the rest of the game is really neat to me. Mm-hmm. And th- in this game specifically, there's just so like in the witchcraft, sorry, uh, <laughs> there's just so much more that they've added. Like you can get you can get sprites. So like as part of the enemies that you might face on a mission, if you defeat them, you can get them for the rest of the game, which is awesome. Which to also add on to, whenever you go on a mission, 
there are going to be enemies, but you don't always have to face all of them. But it's mm-hmm. typically, it's always a good thing to do that if you have extra power. So I love this because like there was nothing like the jury mechanic in the original Resist. There's nothing like the sprites. Um, there is like sisterhoods of the witches mm-hmm. where like they have similar last names. And so those cards actually build off of each other if you can get all of them into your party at the same time. And all of that just makes this game even like it was a nine out of 10 for resist. I think it was uh, like number three uh, for me and my top solo games of all time. Final girl was number one. Um, and then uh, just <laughs> shout, shout out to that final out, girl. Just, uh, but, but witchcraft, witchcraft is even better than resist. So um, wow. I'm, I'm, I think everybody for looking for a spooky game and they're like, I've already played final girl. I'm, I'm looking for another solo <laughs> spooky yeah. game to play. Witchcraft is great. But. That's awesome. I haven't played Resist, and I just got Witchcraft specifically because, um, for the listeners that don't know, I do a solo series on Board Game Geek YouTube channel, mm. and so I want to do Witchcraft for my solo mode video for October because awesome. I thought yeah. it would be perfect. So I it like just came right after we got back from Florida, so I'm excited to dive in because I love the theme. I love doing witchy stuff. Who doesn't? Yeah, absolutely. I had told Max that if I didn't think that it was different enough from the original game, I would just be giving him witchcraft. And I think, unfortunate for him, I love witchcraft. (laughs) So now you're going to have to get your own. But Max, I still think you should play. Yeah, I definitely want to. Uh, I I am the target audience, I think, where I love spooky things. And I'm not a big solo gamer, as I've discussed before. But, like, Mm -hmm. nothing about Resist was going to entice me to play it in and of itself. Um, So to take that build upon it make it even better and add a theme that i'm actually genuinely excited about i'm really looking forward to uh to playing it eventually um you know we'll we got a lot of games to play but i'm very (laughs) very looking forward to playing it listen we could always do what we did with final girl and i could i could yeah do two solo plus yeah yeah that was a great video keeps getting comments to this day right (laughs) Doolin? yeah for anybody that doesn't know max and Doolin did a final girl playthrough together for max's first play Mm -hmm. we did and if they made mistakes, you know what? Doesn't matter. <laughs> you don't. You don't need to let it's them know about it. It's one of our best it. videos, <laughs> maybe because did. we made some mistakes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> the amount of engagement we get on that content <laughs> is really something special. Most like it comments makes us, every month. We should honestly <laughs> just lean into like purposefully doing poorly game, poorly recorded gameplays <laughs> oh, because man, the you engagement would get is through so the much charts. engagement. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. It's wild. <laughs> Uh, oh god max what about you what have you been up to lately? so i want to keep it in the vein of spooky but i don't want to talk about it too much if you haven't seen it yet um Mm -hmm. for those of you who aren't aware we actually participate in not even board game box office related our own little movie club uh Mm -hmm. and for this week i chose as above so below i've already seen it have you all seen it yet i haven't watched it yet okay okay so i won't say I, i want to talk about it just briefly but i won't get into it um Part of why I want to talk about it is because it very well may later um, become a part of the discussion as we talk about certain things later on in the podcast. Ooh. But uh, this is a it's a 2014 film. It's a it's a uh, what's it called found footage film, um, and it's all about like exploring the Paris catacombs, and it's very spooky, oh. ghostly stuff oh. like that. Those um, are terrifying. I love it. <laughs> this oh. film this film was really panned on release, which. It's horror, right? And it's found yeah. footage. Like horror in general always seems to be very polarizing mm-hmm. with even like yeah. the best horror films. Well, okay, maybe not the very best, but good horror films and widely considered good by horror people have very poor Rotten Tomatoes, IMDb scores, so on and so forth. Yep. Um, and this is one that has a 28% on Rotten Tomatoes, which again, I don't I don't really <laughs> care about Rotten Tomatoes. I don't think it's a very good website or tool, but uh, not a lot of people critically like it. I thought it was really good. Um, it's not perfect. It's silly at times. It, I'm not saying it's amazing, but um, the vibe, the Paris catacombs feeling, like all that stuff was just so, uh, it worked super well for me. So I'm really mm-hmm. curious to hear what you all have to say about it when we get to it. Um, but again, it may come back up later in the podcast. Uh, so I wanted to at least, you know, put a little breadcrumb out there for it. I enjoyed it. I'm excited to hear what you all have to say about it as well. 
Is it a newer movie or is it older? No, 2014. So, I mean, okay. neither. You know, it's not It's not yeah. old. It's not new. It's very um, middling. <laughs> yeah, it's very very middle of the road as far as when it yeah. came out. But uh, I, I, I really dug it. I think a lot of people hate, like, the main character and stuff like that. And I get it, but I don't really care. Uh, yeah. I think it's good. I think it's good. And I've always, like, you know, a lot of people say, what's your Roman Empire? And I guess if I had to pick one, it might be, mm-hmm. like, catacombs. I just find them so interesting like uh i've been in the paris catacombs before obviously not anywhere to the extent that they did in this film (laughs) i did not see any ghosts there i did not see any ghosts i saw some bones but uh, there's like skeleton oh pre-ghosts oh yeah yeah there's skeletons (laughs) and they're real but i was like what yeah yeah the catacombs are just so fascinating in my opinion and so to have a movie that takes place in the catacombs oh I'll sell you, Doolin. I promise I'll sell you. And I want you to go in with this expectation. And I hope you have a good time. Because we all know these movies aren't perfect either. But it's basically spooky national treasure. Ooh. So I thought you were going to tell me that they eat like crepes or something. No. That was going to be exciting. <laughs> Absolutely not. Just wait, Doolin. They They're eat in Paris, crepes. Though. It's, it's got very much of like a Tomb Raider, National Treasure oh, kind of cool. vibe because like the main character is on a, on a search for um, actual, I mean, this is not a spoiler. It's, it's literally in the first two minutes, but her goal is to find Nicholas Flamel's The Sorcerer's Stone. So it's also like a time between Harry Potter in a way, um, but like she's searching the catacombs to find the Sorcerer's Stone. So she's very much of like a treasure hunter and it's got that mm-hmm. horror vibe attached to it. I really enjoyed it. Um, and I'd like to see elements of it brought into a uh, final girl game, which we'll oh, discuss snap. later. So listen, at first I thought you were going to say that she was on a hunt for Nicolas Cage. And I was like, no, I that, that's what, no. <laughs> Let, let's I, go. Would, I too would be in. <laughs> Does Nicolas Cage oh, wow. make an appearance in this film? Uh, no. They say yes. Mm, no. Dang it. Not that I am Dang aware it. of. At they probably least. didn't reach out to him because I feel like he says yes to anything. That's he, true. He would Might probably be true. been like, oh, yeah, sure. Yeah. I don't know yeah, any do of it. the actors in this movie either. Um, I do think, I could be wrong, don't hold me to this. I think they actually filmed it in the Paris Catacombs. I'm sure they didn't film 100% of it in the Paris Catacombs. Uh, right. So they had to make their own sets for some things. But apparently quite a bit of it was actually filmed in the Catacombs, which I think is really interesting. So as long as you go into it expecting a silly at times but fun good spooky enough kind of movie i think you're gonna have a good time with it don't go in expecting Mm -hmm. a masterpiece but i think you'll like it well for me i have two things to talk about the first and one because i don't want to talk about two things oh you can talk (laughs) listen there's there's no rules here there's no rules here so i recently saw speak no evil in the theaters Mm. the new one did the new one have either of you seen it yet i've not seen the old one or the new one I haven't seen the old one. I didn't even know that that was a thing that existed until just right now this second. So anyways, I saw the new one in theaters and I was really excited because the th- uh, the trailers looked really cool. I love James McAvoy. Like I just mm-hmm. I think he's oh, yeah. awesome. He could play any role uh, and he was awesome in this movie. But I do have to say, like, I left the theater feeling a little bit disappointed So basically, the premise of the movie, without spoilers, is this family goes on a vacation, they meet another family, they really hit it off, and the family invites them to their country home, to their farm for a long weekend getaway, and obviously, it's a, what, it's called, Blumfield, 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 it's a Blumfield. Is it Bloom House? What is it? Bloom House. So there's a, there's a haunted maze here called Bloomfield. (laughs) Oh, based okay. on Bloom House, so I get them confused a lot. Anyways, so you know, like something bad is gonna happen. The family yeah, is is crazy and all of these things. But like, I don't even feel like I need to say anything to spoil the movie because you know it. <laughs> that like the the trailer and the outline. That's the movie. And mm. so I wish that there was a little bit more. I don't think I was scared enough mm. at all throughout the movie. Like there was moments that were gross. But to be expected. Sure. Yeah. So anyways, James McAvoy was amazing. I thought like he stunning. just can play any role and he can like play the creep <laughs> stunning. <laughs> and Negronly <laughs> Spagliato. <laughs> <laughs> stunning. Um, so that's one. I, oh, I do jobs. think that I <laughs> gun <call jobs. laughs> I do think that if people liked it, they should or are interested, they should definitely see it because I enjoyed it. But I didn't love it as much as I wanted to, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to see if you liked, and I don't necessarily expect you to, 
but yeah. I, I don't know uh, the reception. Like, I haven't really seen. I know that Speak No Evil, the original, is, is pretty well regarded. Not like everyone loves it, but mm-hmm. quite a few people do. So I don't know if this is like literal shot for shot remake, but American, or right. if there's like enough differences. But I'd be curious to see if you in, ended up eventually watching the original. Um, yeah. how they compared because i plan on i do plan on watching it it's actually been a film that's been on my watch list for a long time um but i'll probably watch both of them eventually i just haven't got around mm-hmm. to it yet but i think they sound pretty cool yeah yeah the premise is super cool yeah. it's just like at the end i was like oh cool and then i, I walked have, out and i was like oh <laughs> i have purpose purposefully stayed away from trailers because i was specifically told that the trailer for the new speak no evil like gives it all away yeah. Um, and so they were like, if you want to see this and, you know, don't already yeah. know the story from the original, you really shouldn't watch the trailer, which is so dumb. Why do trailers do I that? Know. Like, I know. Think of- I would definitely recommend doing that because it does show like because some of the coolest scenes are mm-hmm. in the trailer. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> the, the thing that I always think about, which I'm not sure how you would do this. I'm not a marketing manager, though. Maybe I could be one day. Um but mm-hmm. like think of Abigail, which I know neither of you all loved, but imagine that it was you fine. didn't know the premise of that going in it would have been yes. so much more interesting mm-hmm. than yes. the trailer being like, oh, it's a ballerina vampire. Like just not <laughs> just tells, knowing tells that at all yeah. would have been so cool. Yeah, you know so from like cool. minute one of Abigail yeah. what the whole story is. Yeah. Like, the whole story is. Like, you don't know the full story of Speak No Evil. There's some, like, little tidbits that get revealed. But the general premise, you're like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then the other thing, I've been watching Yellow Jackets, uh, which is a TV show. I'm just in season one. Have either of you watched this show? Mm -hmm. I've never seen it, but I've been interested. It is very good, very weird. Uh, It's not a true story, but essentially the story is a girl's soccer team. They go to nationals. Their plane crashes. And crazy things happen. It is like loosely based on the, um, you guys, you know the movie that we all watched that time, The Snow Society, about the plane crash. You didn't watch, Max. That wasn't a movie club pick. Well, Mm -hmm. it should be. You should watch it. (laughs) (laughs) All right, I'm just saying. (laughs) Don't get on me for skipping it. You haven't seen it either? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But you know the story. It's Spanish, dude, and you'd like it. Yeah. It is Spanish. It has subtitles. And even I liked it. And Dang. for anybody that's listening, Honestly. I don't watch movies with subtitles because I think trek. I don't need to read while I'm watching. But this one, I did. It's amazing. Anyways, it's loosely based off of that kind of premise. So that kind of gives you an idea of what like the general, mm-hmm. what mm-hmm. it's about. Anyways, we're on episode nine. I love it. It's really good. If people want something that's like, it's scary, but it's not so scary because, <laughs> you know. Some funny things happen in it, but some very scary things happen in it all at the same time. So there's a second season, too, I guess, as well. Yeah, and just I... just came out this year. Yellow Jackets. Yeah. Okay. Yellow Jackets. Yeah. It's not about bees, so don't be afraid. Okay. <laughs> the bees. Thank God for that. Ah, the bees. <laughs> oh, my God. My. Word of the month. We're on to the segment where I talk about a word of the month. So every month we choose a word or a term or a phrase for anybody that's listening to the podcast that might be new to board games. Fan Rider Games is a board game publishing company. So we want to bring more people in to board gaming. We love it. So today's term is going to be push your luck, which isn't very specifically a board game term. Many people have probably heard about it, but push your luck is a type of board game mechanic where you are, it's typically with dice rolling, card flipping, things like that, where you have to make some sort of a decision on whether or not you continue with your turn with the risk of busting, losing all your points, losing all your money, all of those good things. I picked this term because when I think of watching a horror movie, often you are pushing your luck to see whether or not it's actually scary or maybe it's not so scary, which just so happens to be today's topic. So that's push your luck. Do do you guys have a favorite push your luck game? I'm curious. I mean, Can't Stop is like the clear front runner that immediately pops into my head. I'm not sure, Mm -hmm. like I'd have to really mull over it to tell you if that's my favorite, but that's like the one that immediately jumps to the forefront. One of my favorites is Cubitos. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Cubitos. Quacks of Quedlinburg Ooh, is another yeah. good one. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. I'm trying to think if there's any anything else, but those are definitely the three that like really jump. What's the one that I hate, Doolin? Um, 
Filler bust. Filler bust. Terrible game. Awful game. Never heard of it. Don't keep it that way. Uh, Forget I said it. (laughs) Consider it gone. (laughs) Table nuts might be more popular than filler bust. So we're we're not like pegging them down like they're like a big company or something. Right. Got it. (laughs) Got it. Okay. So that is the word of the month. And now, as per usual, we also have a Van Ryder game of the month. So each month we feature a different Van Ryder game. And a lot of times it is Final Girl, but not this month. (laughs) So this month I went with something slightly different. So the game of the month for this month is going to be one of our graphic novel adventure books, Lily Van Helsing. And uh, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this. So graphic novel adventures is a series of books that we have that are essentially like you're going to pick and choose what you do throughout the book. So there is a story you play as a character. Character. Most of them are solo experiences. Some of them you could play cooperatively. And then throughout the story, you are going to be finding hidden numbers and you are going to select a number, go to that panel, read that portion or look for another number. And you're trying to solve mysteries or kind of write your own story. And with Lily Van Helsing in particular, Lily is a monster hunter. But The reason I picked it is because it's not so scary, even though it's based on monsters and hunting Mm -hmm. monsters and vampires and werewolves and all of this stuff. But it's done in a fun way that everyone can enjoy, families, kids, adults, all the same. It is my favorite of the graphic novel adventure series. I actually played it on stream on the Van Ryder oh, Games nice. channel. So if people want to watch it, they can go and do that. But that's the game of the month. So if you're kind of like looking at the graphic novel adventure catalog and you're not sure where to start, Lily Van Helsing is a great place to start. Now and the, it's almost October, so it's a great time to do it. The graphic novel adventures, do they sh- are they in the same line as the kids' versions or is that like a slightly different line? It's the same but slightly different. So okay. we have three GNA Junior books. Got it. Uh, and those are less focused sometimes on like finding the numbers. So it might be finding a color and mm-hmm. it's meant to be like done with a parent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we also have some cooperative experiences like the Crusoe crew that you can do like everybody plays a different character and everybody's book is slightly different. So mm, you might see cool. something in your book that the other person doesn't see in their panel. So... Lots of different ways to play. Yeah, I've always loved pick your own adventure things, choose your own adventures. Mm-hmm. I used to grow up reading those books. So I know we've got a couple of the ones. I can't remember. It's the, what's the name of it? It's like the postman bird. Mr. Wingletter. Yes. My Ellie has <laughs> gone through at least a part of that one day with me and it was a good time. Uh-huh. So we'll hope to finish it up. But nice. yeah, they're good. So the main topic, let's dive in, shall we, today? Ooh. We are getting into the world of the not so scary. Uh, (laughs) And this is for both horror movies and board games. You know, the ones that might have a bit of a spooky exterior, but are more fun and quirky uh, than nightmare inducing, basically. Uh, Perfect for people who love the genre, but maybe don't love jump scares or intense fears, which I would definitely say described me earlier on in my life (laughs) i want i Mm -hmm. wanted the spooky theme but i didn't want to be scared now i very much enjoy the very scary stuff so you know sometimes we grow into our scares Mm -hmm. it's fine okay everybody's got to start somewhere yeah exactly everyone's got to start somewhere i was inspired to do this topic because i was just at disney world and i went to mickey's (laughs) not so scary halloween party (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) and i was like oh this is such a great topic because disney in my personal opinion They host some of the best not-so-scary kind of movies. Like, they have Hocus Pocus. They have uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. They have, like, Frankenweenie. I actually don't know if that's a Disney movie, but it might be. So... (laughs) (laughs) Think so? Maybe. Max, it might be. (laughs) Who's to say? Who's to say, really? They'll say, but who's to say? It is on Disney+, Plus, so, you know... I, so I think that listen, means it's it's Disney. Yeah, it's, it is Disney. Disney You're, owns Disney everything DreamWorks. at this it's, point. Yeah, it's Disney DreamWorks, yeah. Okay, so if Disney bought DreamWorks, then there's nothing left for anybody yeah. else because they bought everything, which is great. And that's not so scary either. Okay. <laughs> Disney so, buying everything? <laughs> Disney buying everything. That's pretty scary. Listen, <laughs> it's better for me because when I go to Disney World, I have access to more things. True. Right? True. I love it. All right, so 
We're going to dive into this discussion. And the first question that I have for everyone is, what do you think actually qualifies a movie to be not so scary? Like, what is the line of like, mm. oh, this is kind of a fun horror versus this is for real sees scary? That's tough. <laughs> yeah. I Max, think take the lead. <laughs> well, I think... <laughs> You kind of already said what I was going to say, which is to say that it's like got the spooky exterior. It's got the theme, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it is trying to evoke the horror or the sense of fear. Um, Mm -hmm. You've already named several movies that that succeed in that realm, but um, there are games and movies that the theme in and of itself is a spooky thing, but it's not trying to scare you. It's just trying to put you in that world. It's, It's more about the... Um, I can't think of the, the proper word I'm thinking of, but I'll the figure it out eventually. Yeah, the atmosphere, the way it makes you feel, rather than you know the actual fear behind it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. So I don't know. I think it's a good thing to have that because there is a different kind of audience where there are people much like yourselves who said that initially you weren't really interested in being scared. So it kind of lets you mm-hmm. dip your toe in, right? It's like, ooh, here's here's the Halloweenness of it all. But we're mm-hmm. not going to scare the daylights out of you. Um, here's, you know, the ghosts, but no jump scares and so on and so forth. So, um, right. Hocus Pocus, great one. Even something like uh, like Drag Me to Hell, Doolin, which is very much more yeah. of a like campy kind of thing. Or there's or not Evil even really Dead. like a villain. In yeah, that, really. in like certainly Evil Dead could still be considered scary to some. I'm specifically talking about the early Sam Raimi ones. But, like, they're also very slapstick and very funny all at the same time. So it Shaun you can kind Dead. of, like, elect, Shaun of the Dead's a perfect example. Um, yeah. Something that's very much on the face horror, but you get down into it, and there's not much in there that should really scare you. Uh, and you should mm-hmm. just be having a good time in the world, in the atmosphere of it all. I think, for me, like, early on, I was I was like what you were saying, Jamie. I saw Sinister when I was in high school. <sighs> That's a good yeah. one. And that That's one was one. legitimately like <laughs> terrifying. Like, terrified me. Like I yeah. left that I theater thinking that I never want to see another scary film ever again. And like I, <laughs> right. I I was terrified. And then I think um it was around the same time we started Table Knots. Emily and I were like, you know, neither of us had watched any scary films and we compiled mm-hmm. a list of like seventy and it was when we were both like quarantined and we were like, let's just watch as many of these as we possibly could. And it was right. I Halloween. remember when you guys, I feel yeah. like I remember when you guys did that. And we decided, we decided to take it slow. We were like, let's start with the earliest ones. Psycho. And I think that helped. Yeah. Like yeah. psycho. Mm-hmm. I have even like on my list of not so scary, but scary, like poltergeist. I remember being oh, like, yeah. this is like almost family friendly scary. It is for sure. Yeah. I think so. Um, and even things now, like I know that at the time they were scary, but like things like Halloween and Friday the 13th mm-hmm. are just now like fun, scary to be mm-hmm. in, if that makes sense. Um, so like that to me, I, I don't know if it makes sense to say old makes not, it makes it not so scary. <laughs> it totally it can. Yeah. But like that's the way it is for, for at least us because now we're able to watch scary things and I'm fine. Like if Max threw on like a really scary film, I'd be like, Ooh, like at first, but like I would still watch it. But back then, yeah. old Doolin would be like, no, no, absolutely not. <laughs> I'm skipping this. <laughs> absolutely not. That's really interesting that you said like old because it's so true. Because obviously movies like Halloween, the whole purpose was to scare people. Mm-hmm. Even Jaws. Like yeah. if you think mm-hmm, about it, mm-hmm. like that's Great supposed movie. to be a horror movie. And then now you watch it and you're like, ah, that's why does he walk so slow? That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> like, Or like something like that. So I, I do think like it's interesting how time can make what is supposed to be scary suddenly not so scary. Yeah. And even as you age. And that just made me think of and I. I don't know why, but there's almost a reverse to this because there are movies that were made to not be scary that ended up being scary for me anyways, mm. like E.T. when I was a kid. Oh, like, yeah. It's obviously not meant to be scary, but it scared me. <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, that's almost like the reverse of what we're talking about. That just popped into my head. <laughs> no, anyways. that's fair. I do you think there's still yeah. plenty of old horror movies that can be scary, um, like Alien the thing Mm -hmm. stuff like that can certainly to me at least um the shining a little more psychological but still Mm -hmm. uh, can certainly be scary but um yeah it kind of you know 
as things evolve, it's just easier to be scared when it is more familiar to you and something that you feel like could actually happen. And of course, the way mm-hmm. things are um, shot and edited and whatnot, it looks yeah, what's a bit more realistic now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's just like, it's a very interesting discussion. As much as I love old horror films, um, not mm-hmm. many of them will scare me as much. And like, someone could say like found footage is the scariest and in a way it kind of is just because like it's the most real but there are also going to be some people that it doesn't bother them at all like they don't even like the the genre in and of itself so it's quite interesting yeah it definitely is like i think found i would agree i think found footage for me is the scariest Mm -hmm. because like i remember in high school like watching the blair witch project that's the one that broke me Doolin. like i was like (laughs) i'm never going outside again Uh, well i i saw like parts of it. oh we should watch Blair Witch Project that's a okay. good one paranormal activity it's, like the paranormal original, activity yeah. frightening terrifying frightening. is it a good movie I don't know was I absolutely terrified in the theaters a hundred percent hundred percent yeah yeah oh I, I think I, mean, I do too I think they're Cloverfield enjoyable. is like I've not seen Cloverfield my... yet oh dude oh yeah I think mm, you'd like so that good. one yeah that was on our list that we finally got to eventually and yeah. I was I was over the moon about it it was so good the yeah, Exorcist so is still quite scary, I think, in my opinion. Yeah. A lot of it's not, but there are like a few real harrowing scenes in there. Like it, all it takes mm-hmm. is one, really. Like the whole movie can be not scary, but then you have one it's just killer what, scene and that you're like, oh, you. oh boy, yeah. Makes the your spine tingle a little bit. Ooh, Mufasa, Mufasa, Mufasa. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, why do you think that movies like this often get like a cult following? Like, mm. obviously, nostalgia plays a role, but I'm thinking mm-hmm. of things like Hocus Pocus, uh, Beetlejuice, uh, Ghostbusters, yeah, Nightmare Before Christmas, like all of these things. Mm-hmm. They have like people like are diehard fans of yeah. these. Like, some people make it their whole personality, basically. <laughs> like, yeah. I have a Nightmare Before Christmas tattoo. Mm-hmm. So, like, I. I don't know. What do you that's think? That's the only it is thing I think them? of when I think of Jamie. Is oh yeah, yeah. that's her whole personality. Is Nightmare yeah. Before Christmas. It's my whole my whole personality <laughs> is Disney, but that's, that's you know, <laughs> it's all ties in. I think in a way it has to do with just um, just being more like generalized in the sense that more people are going to watch it. Uh, so mm. you know something like uh, an actual scary movie is not going to have the appeal for people of all ages that something Mm -hmm. like uh, Rocky Horror, Beetlejuice, Clue, all the things you've mentioned can. Um, Whereas they can appeal to someone kind of in their formative years. And when you're watching something in your formative years, you kind of develop a sort of attachment to it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, I did watch scary movies growing up. I, I, Signs, Saw... Uh, Friday the 13th, all of those were something I watched as a a growing boy. And so they were like REC even very formative for me, but they won't be for most. Mm -hmm. Whereas for most people, the things that are going to really have that lasting kind of nostalgia attachment to them are going to be the films that they were able to watch when they were 10 rather than they had to wait until they were Mm -hmm. 18 to see or something like that. Um, So I think that it just, it, it kind of, it's like, it's like a favorite like blanket that you take to bed with you, right? Like you get it at a younger age and you keep it until you've far outgrown it. And it's kind of like those films, like you get to them at a younger age, but then they meant something so much to you that you keep them as one of your favorites until you've far outgrown it. So um, I don't know if nostalgia is the only right reason that they become these like cult classics. I'm sure there's many other reasons. Um, A lot of them have to do with like, at least in my opinion, Um, these films require like a bit of a commitment from the actors or the directors, like a choice that they had to really commit to. So you think of Michael Mm -hmm. Keaton in Beetlejuice, you think of Tim Curry in Clue, um, you think Mm -hmm. of Jack Skellington in Nightmare (laughs) Before Christmas, just these big, bold characters that were necessary for the film to be successful. Um, And if you put a, a lesser actor or a person less committed to it in that role, the film would not be anywhere near as successful um but it was just kind of like the they kind of struck gold there with the right actor the right film the right amount of passion behind it that it just kind Mm -hmm. of exploded so i think that that's where i land on it Mm -hmm. i I think there's something to seeing something spooky shocking together like uh i i don't know if you guys have, have ever been like super into like horror like other things like video games Mm-hmm. But like I, especially Until in dawn. college, especially in college when like, you know, 
all of my friends, we would get together, we would do stuff. I remember, I think for like, it might have been like the height of this, but uh, YouTube was really heavy into um, showing people react to scary mm -hmm. games. And mm -hmm. so we would we would play these games together and it would be one of these things where all of a sudden something that's scary is just way more fun when it's shared. Oh, yeah. Um, right. And so I, I think there's something to like horror um, and even like not so scary horror where it's like we're doing this and we're watching. Have you seen this yet? Oh, my gosh. You have to see this. Like mm -hmm. uh, like uh, like word of mouth that really gets everybody involved and then you feel like you're a part of something right mm -hmm. like it's like i saw this too i survived this even though like it was a movie like you're gonna survive it but <laughs> <laughs> i don't know have you seen the ring mm, that's fair don't watch that movie or the movie in Scary. the movie yeah someone asked if you could pick a single horror franchise um that you would like bank on surviving and i was like the obvious answer is the ring like i'm not you dumb enough watch to watch the film <laughs> yeah i'm yeah. just not gonna watch it someone's gonna be like you should watch this there's a rumor and i'm like nope max nope. is I'm gonna good. be like what's its letterbox score though yeah uh, <laughs> 3.7 no thank you uh no three thank tenths you. too low <laughs> that's uh that's gonna be a They'd no for me be, be like oh this is poorly rated Doolin and be like add it to the watch Whoa. list are there cops in it <laughs> <laughs> oh my god um they just write I actually C-O-P-S on the on the disc yeah. <laughs> oh cops I'll watch this <laughs> Um, I actually like that now that you were saying that with like growing up with all of those things, I can't think of any newer like movies like this that have the same kind of love for them. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, when's the last Beetlejuice like new since like 20, hmm. I don't know, 20 something <laughs> come out? Specifically in like the not so scary realm. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of horror films, I think, that have come out that have really garnered a, a bit of a following. Uh, you think of like Hereditary and Midsummer and stuff like that, that really do have like a, a popular uh, opinion behind it. But as far as like the mm -hmm. not so scary stuff, I feel like, I mean, maybe I'm just being silly and maybe it is looking back at it with nostalgia and rose tinted glasses and whatnot. But like, I don't know of like, a not so scary horror film that's come out lately. That's been really good. Uh, like, I mean, I don't yeah. want to, I'm not saying it's a bad movie, but what was the werewolf one we watched that was like fine. Um, and that would be oh. not so horror. And, but yeah. at the same time, it's just like, that would that definitely was, fit in that. It, werewolves, I within. Good. werewolves within. Um, werewolves within. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's a, it was good. Yeah, it's a but fine it's movie. like, nobody's talking about that. Like, right. it's not like cult classic level. I would say maybe what do you think Krampus? about with that what about ready or not yeah the, those that's actually fair. that's a great one all all those from i forget whatever the company is but they did they did uh disney abigail too <laughs> just, just kidding <laughs> um, but all of those he probably yeah. owns it somehow all of those probably. are good for sure yeah that's the only one i can think of that i know people talk and like i'm obviously biased because ready or not mm -hmm. is like my favorite movie and i generally lean towards those campy like not so scary scary mm -hmm horror type movies like killer clowns um yeah killer clowns motor space for sure that's, that's a making old a comeback movie, but Ooh, what we do it, in the shadows yeah. i mean it's not it's not <gasps> super old but that might be one of the ones that has like the biggest kind of following and yeah and shawn of the dead <clears throat> uh something mm -hmm. like that but you know none of those have come out in the last five years or anything like that what is this question that i wrote down <laughs> <laughs> i don't have my glasses on Oh, can you think of any movies or games that were made to be scary but ended up like getting put into the not so scary category? I I'll just go ahead and say like going back to my other statement, I think all of those old films were probably meant mm -hmm. to be scary sure. and were scary at some point. But I don't know if one not off the top of my head that was made and as soon as it came out it wasn't scary. Right. But then it ended up like still being a hit like if that makes sense right i think a polarizing one um from recently that i don't think any of you all have seen uh, but i implore you to watch it if you're at least remotely interested would be skinnamarink uh which is a movie that is certainly Oof. intended to be scary and some people think it's absolutely terrifying one of the scariest things they've seen mm. and other people are like this is more boring than watching paint dry 
because it's very experimental <laughs> um and it's right. not super narrative driven it is a lot of static shots of a literal wall like when people say that it's more boring than watching paint dry it's not that hyperbolic because <laughs> it kind mm-hmm. of feels like you kind of are watching paint dry at times um but <laughs> Some people think it's terrifying. You're really selling it here, hey, Max. <laughs> some people think it is absolutely terrifying. I liked it. I do not. It's not a movie I would ever recommend someone be like, oh, yeah, you're going to love this. I would recommend right. it off of the fact that I want to know what you think about this. Like, I think everyone should watch it, but it's not mm. that I think they're going to like it. I'm just curious to, to know what they have to say. But that would be one I think that certainly its intention is to be scary. Some people think it is. Some people think it's just absolutely dumb which isn't even like the not so scary camp it's just like it's really just bad yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like it really didn't even work i feel like a lot of times when they try to make movies about sharks in like, like sharknado yeah. like well yeah that was obviously <laughs> meant to be dumb but i mean like deep blue sea mm. or like some of the like megalodon or whatever like oh, are they the making meg. those the meg I've heard yeah, whatever it is swim. I've not seen it, but that came out. I haven't this seen it yet. I've been very tempted to watch it. I hear because, like, I am really I am scared of sharks. Like, they are right outside my door. Well, I got like them a, on a tracker. It's like a pool. I know too. It's not even like it's how not they even get in the there. But there's sharks scary. in a pool. No, I don't think there are sharks. <laughs> I'm just saying it's about a pool. It's like it just a killer has water pool. In it. I don't know. What oh my God. the pool kills people? I I don't know, Doolin. I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Well, now I want to watch it. Now we have so, to add it to the list. I'll have to report. I'll put it on. Maybe that'll be my next pick hey, since I'm the next, next person pick, in yeah. movie club. No, I already have. I'm making everybody watch Dead Alive. Yes. So, That's on my Max watch list love for October anyway. Danielle is going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Doolin and Emily might be on the fence. So I don't excited. know. It's so Peter that's Jackson. my next pick. It's Peter Jackson. It's his first ever movie, Doolin, and it's just as good as Lord of the Rings. Ooh, <laughs> don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. <laughs> no, I swear it. It's called I Brain it. You'll Dead see. in the States for anyone who's yeah, that's listening true. and doesn't see that. You'd probably be able to find that on a Google result. But yeah, Brain Dead yeah. is in the States at least. We'll, we'll, watch. we'll stoked, be watching Jamie. it Heck soon. yeah, what a so pick. Don't even... Don't even worry about it. I literally it, okay? made myself an October watch list, and I'm mm-hmm. already crossing off two with As Above, So Below, and Brain Dead. Those are literally in there. Look well, at us. We have to wait till next week. Remember, you're not allowed to watch it early. I have that's, to watch. That's a rule you guys made. So many movies for Board Game Box Office. That will not be a problem. <laughs> I have to Perfect. watch four movies by next Thursday, so Brain Dead will have to wait. Get after it. Okay, let's switch gears a little bit from movies to board games because I think this is such an interesting topic. Can board games be scary? Why or why not? And then what game do you think gets the closest to actually being scary? Mm. I land on the side that board games cannot or have not figured out how to actually be scary um Mm -hmm. now i do want to say too that i i do think you can put forth the effort and it can get close and by that i mean um i mean i i remember many times playing betrayal like at night in at at the lake cabin with a literal flashlight dangling from the ceiling and like (laughs) and spooky atmospheric music in the background and those things certainly add to it i still don't think it reaches that level but they certainly help um i i've yet to meet a game that's actually been scary i do think there are games Mm -hmm. that are more successful at it than most um you know i think something like uh final girl uh nemesis the night cage are all Mm -hmm. films that are films are all games that (laughs) do enough to kind of get you into that vibe um, that it's at least more successful than others, but right. personally, I've I've not come across a game that's really given me the scary feeling that I'm after. It can give you tense, anxiety-ridden moments for sure. That is a very common feeling I have when playing board games, and, and a feeling that I love, but not quite the same. Um, I'm kind of with you, Max. Um, I just think. If I'm labeling board games as scary, I'm labeling them scary in a different way. Because uh, I don't think they'll ever be as scary as, like, some of these movies that we're watching. Like, mm-hmm. it's never, like, a, a it could be the scariest board game possible. It's not going to get me as bad as Sinister or something like that. Yeah, where, 
Like there, there's unless they can figure out how to put jump scares in a box, um, <laughs> then they're not going to get me that way. <laughs> um, yeah, but totally that being reason. said, I I have said like. I've left with similar feelings that, especially some of these older films that we were just talking about, like The Shining, this feeling of unease and not really understanding what's about to happen. Uh, I've gotten from the games the best example I can think of that has given me a feeling that I've gotten from playing a video game is Tainted Grail, where like there's just mm-hmm. some of these, this writing and this storytelling that is done where I've gotten my character so far and I have the choice: do I go, do I follow the sounds into a, at this cave? And if I do, I might get really good things. But if I if I do, I also might find death. And uh, and like just this, the way that it it gives you this sense of dread as you're reading things. Like any game that does that, I think does a good job. Um, Mansions of Madness mm-hmm. was one that came mm-hmm. to my mind. Like our play uh, with you, uh, Jamie. Uh, was really really yeah. good and there were even moments then where it's it's tense because you're reading things and you're like is it is something really bad about to happen to us um yeah. and then <laughs> the best example i think of like silly scary max is um terror escape yeah uh because we there are genuine moments where you're trying to hide from jash when jash was playing the killer every time um where he's like we know he can find us like if he just makes the right choice he will kill one of us and we have to just sit there and no matter what he says we have to be like (laughs) and we all are giving each other that look of 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 genuine like excitement but also anticipation and Mm -hmm. fear um i think that is about as close too scary as a video or video game board game has gotten me (laughs) ha 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 i can't believe you said the (laughs) wrong thing (laughs) (laughs) how embarrassing yeah i i that's a good point i think uh mansion's madness is a good example because of the app Mm -hmm. and it has the atmospheric music Mm -hmm. and it does it's so difficult it feels hopeless like there's a level of hopelessness that you feel when playing mansion's of madness because you're like we're all gonna die (laughs) but who's going to be the one that betrays us all because you've gone insane or whatever it might be. But I think like for me, uh, the night cage is the closest game that Mm -hmm. I have played that has given me that. But there's a caveat. We turned off all the lights. Yeah, We set the table lights to red. We lit a candle. We played creepy music in Mm -hmm. the background. And my brother kept like tapping on the table and I was like, what was that? Like, stop doing that. (laughs) So That is more so like you're setting your own atmosphere. And so in that instance, I feel like if you play any kind of horror themed game and if you put yourself in the right setting or the right mood for it, it can elevate it to being that. I have heard so many people like this is one of the main things that I hear from people about Final Girl. Oh, I'm too afraid to play it. Like I scary movie, like scary stuff scares me. Is it too scary for me to play? And I'm like, no, no. <laughs> like, unless you're afraid of fake dying, which yeah. you're going to do <laughs> because unless that's just how, yeah, well, <laughs> you probably cheated. I'll, I'll write it in your comments. Yeah, you should check out the video. <laughs> Let me know what we did wrong. <laughs> yeah. But like, I don't like, I love Final Girl because it gives you the feeling of being in the horror movie. Mm-hmm. Like it feels mm-hmm. like you're living the horror movie, but it doesn't necessarily have the same kind of like, oh, I'm so scared yeah. as like mm-hmm. me sitting in a theater watching The Grudge and wanting to die because I'm like, I hate, I have like my ears were plugged, my eyes were shut, and I just wanted the movie <laughs> yeah. to be over. Yeah. I have the only time I felt that is playing Agricola. <laughs> but, <laughs> Bazinga. <laughs> Bazinga. Genuine um, horror. Yeah. The, the war cry of Sheldon. <laughs> what do you mean I have to feed my family? Ah! <laughs> you know what? That That's a different uh, topic, but what, what games ended up being scary that shouldn't have been? <laughs> like, that's like, one. Yeah, yeah. That's one for sure. Um, but yeah, I, I think I do lean on the, like, board games can't really be scary unless you help them along mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. a little bit. You mm-hmm. set the right tone and the right mood. And I have played um, Final Girl Carnage at the Carnival with creepy carnival music playing Ooh, in the background. I like that. Down here at night with, like, like my ha- main lights were on, but, like, 
there's windows all around me and it's just creepy because I live in the middle of nowhere. Sharks could come out at any moment. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what could happen, but like that kind of, but once again, it's more so the atmosphere versus mm-hmm. the game itself. So last question before we get into our little fun segment. What is your favorite not so scary movie? And if you had to pick one to watch every Halloween, you only get one, which one is it? Can I have two? I just <laughs> Max, remember that time we played just one yeah. and we had to explain it to Jeff that he could only just put one word. Don't don't make me do that to you. Well, I do want to say with I, I am gonna pick one. I'm gonna pick one. But I yeah. have a caveat in that I think my favorite is Shaun of the Dead. Um, mm-hmm. but if I had to pick one to watch every Halloween specifically, there's something about Shaun of the Dead that doesn't like it can be a year round thing. I don't mind. Mm-hmm. And this is also kind of cheating because it's it's a series rather than a movie, but it plays in about the same length of a movie. Um, Over the Garden Wall, I think, oh, is like a not so, so spooky masterpiece. And it is yep. pure fall Halloween vibes. So if I had to choose one to watch every year in October, it's Over the Garden Wall without a shadow of a doubt. Uh, Over the Garden Wall is 110 minutes in total. Yep. So it's Perfect. not even two hours. It's a 10 Love episode it. series. And every episode is like, I don't know, however many minutes that makes. Starring Elijah Wood? <laughs> yes, Elijah Wood yeah. is the main character, yeah. It's great. Okay. You're going to love like, it. It's so weird. If people wouldn't get mad, I would pick it for BGBO somewhere along the lines. But it is a series, technically. It's a TV yeah. show. Who cares? Um, but yeah, I mean, quite frankly, we can make our own decisions. We're, we're grown. I'm grown. I'm grown. <laughs> uh, so I think, I think Over the Garden Wall is fantastic. And... You, you have to watch it this October, Doolin, or September. This fall season, you gotta. You gotta watch it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Cool. I think for me, um, I mean, there's an, this is, isn't is even trying to be scary ever. Um, maybe if you're, like, very, very young, this would scare you. But Emily and I always watch Hocus Pocus. Like, that has to play at least once. Um, but my personal favorite is just the original Friday the 13th. Like, Ever since we watched it in 2020, I've loved going back to that just because. What? I, what are you talking about? I really <laughs> like this. It's like. What? It's 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 not a perfect film by any means, but like that world and him. He's probably my favorite, like like the most iconic killer. Dude, I think. Of the slashers. I'm going to give you a little spoiler in case you're thinking of the wrong movie. He's only in the first one for like four seconds. I know, but like. <laughs> I love him. He's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> not in the movie at all i've actually never even seen the rest of them like i've only seen this one and i i don't know i always find myself this i'm i'm weird i know but i watch people play like the friday the 13th game i used to play that game a oh, lot i used to play a ton yeah it's so fun i like, love the vibes of friday the 13th and it's one that i grew right? up on like yeah it's like so living well not living but visiting a lake house often kind of gave that dude i get those vibes every time i go visit. yeah it gave that movie like like its own kind of aura that affected me more than others much like the strangers up going there oh i would have never gone back to that lake yes i grew up i would have never gone back to that lake house if i saw that movie as a kid like the strangers is another film that like genuinely terrified me as a kid because Mm. it's all about being like alone in the middle Mm -hmm. of nowhere where no one can Mm -hmm. hear you scream basically um but i i think friday the 13th is a fun movie, but like it is not that good. I want <laughs> to. I also want to start rewatching Get Out. Oh like, yeah, I need to rewatch Get Out. Get Out's so good. good, but that's actually genuinely a little bit scary to me. Yeah, so. that's scary. So is Nope. So is Us. All three of them, though. I'm always excited for a new Jordan Peele film. But I just think it's funny because Kyle hates Friday the Thirteenth. He watched it for the first time this year and gave it a one point five. He's like, it sucks. A 1.5. Wowie. The characters were lame, the kills were mundane, and there were tons of minor nitpicks. I appreciate what it did for horror, but that's where I'll leave it. (laughs) I I love that you had that quote at the ready. I did. I pulled it out. Yeah. I would almost also put Scream and Halloween in there, but those are actually still a little bit scary to me, too. Like, legitimately. I actually, Halloween kind of bothers me. It is like the prototype film slasher movie. I don't think it's that good. Like Ugh. the score, incredible. Yeah, the actual and that, movie. I think is what half half gets me. Like, is like how many times in that movie does Jamie Lee Curtis knock out Michael Myers? And it's like, oh god, 
he's dead. It's like, no, you, you no, he's not. <laughs> That's like such a big nitpick for me. It's just like, don't knock somebody out and then just go lounge on the couch. And that happens like four times in the OG Halloween. And I just, I'm over it. I'm over it. I don't, I don't think it's that good of a movie. And then they kept going for like 10 more. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I think like Hocus Pocus is definitely up there for me, and uh, Halloween Town is oh, of another course. one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. is, I watched that like the first time movie. last year. Really, mm-hmm. the first time? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. Hocus but I Pocus think, like, the first time was like two years ago. Danielle was like, "Wait, you've Max. never seen Hocus Pocus?" <laughs> That's she forced me to watch crazy. It. Yeah. It's good. That's wild. Yeah. It's so good, and it is one that I watch every year. But one show that I revisit. Every year, that is not so scary, is my favorite show of all time, and that is Teen Wolf. Oh, and I, I think love it. Say what we do in the shadows. I mean, <laughs> well, Teen Wolf is what great. we do in the shadows is uh, on repeat, pretty yeah. much. It's all like the, the time. office now. That's oh, Guillermo, oh, okay. you need to drink more water. <laughs> it's so good. The best show ever. But Teen Wolf, because, I mean, it's obviously meant to be like a super... Ne- and I'm talking mm. about the MTV trash version that came out not that long ago. But it's meant to be like scary and it's got some like, woo, but it's really funny and it's fun. And I think I like it because it's such a fun little show. Mm-hmm. That's that's the one for me. And I'll watch it every year. Let's dive into have let's have a little fun. Fun with Final Girl. It's what the people want to hear. People love Final Girl. I thought this whole thing uh, was and fun. F- yeah, I thought this whole thing was fun too. <laughs> Thank you, Max. Me too. But Final Girl, for anybody that doesn't know, Doolin is a huge Final Girl fan and Shoot. Max has played it one time. And And yes, he won. I won. And he and he did it on I camera. I retired. Mm-hmm. Okay. Went out on top. You know. <laughs> Danielle asked you me had the other the complete- day if I could be a final girl. I was like, I don't. I don't think that's how that works, babe. (laughs) I don't think that's how that works. Uh, You had the complete opposite experience to Jeff. Everything that could have gone wrong in his game, it was the most brutal game I've Mm. ever seen. He died. He didn't save anybody. He didn't didn't get to damage Hans at all. It was just, he was dead. And I was like, he's like, you think this is fun? (laughs) And I was like, we got to try that one again. And I need to maybe like stack the deck. Anyways, uh, the segment today is going to be final girl, but make it not so scary. So we have two questions. And the first one is if you could change any final girl feature film to make it less scary and inject some silliness to help those who are afraid, too afraid to try it, because there are people out there who are, uh, which feature film would you pick? And how would you turn it into a not so scary game? I have a tough time answering this one because I've only played okay. it one time. Mm-hmm. Uh, I do think that uh, I can't get specific as far as which one I'd change to what, whatever. But uh, something mm-hmm. along the lines of which may be terrifying for some, but definitely uh, falls in the not so scary for me, like the uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space with the actual guns, kills, cotton candy, cocoons, all of that. I think would just uh-huh. be uh, would be hilarious and a fantastic addition if you all for somehow get the IP for that. <laughs> well, you could. So you what you could do, Max, is you could do Carnage at the Carnival, but just turn it silly. so that so that it's silly, okay. so that people get stuck in cotton candy instead of getting murdered by puppets. I can have Kenny 3D print <laughs> some cotton candy cocoons and uh-huh. some like what are the what are the bubble guns and stuff like that i don't know that's yeah. what a what a wild oh the popcorn guns and stuff yeah what a wild movie that is yeah all right kenny it you're is. gonna have to 3d print some stuff for me <laughs> <laughs> he's gotta be i mean there's no way that he's not uh watching this right like I mean, no yeah yeah he's on chance yeah, 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 yeah. he's our he's biggest here fan. with us now yeah <laughs> <laughs> okay what about you Dulin? so um my jokey answer uh Mm -hmm. is you could just do what every single like uh other board game does that wants to make it like kid friendly you could just make it chibi like just turn all the art into chibi version of final girl actually (laughs) my first final girl and it's like a chibi like hans the the butcher yeah yeah, hans the butcher yeah um hans the baker (laughs) oh nice (laughs) he runs at you with the baguette (laughs) 
Yes. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Um, but my my serious answer, or it's not even serious, because honestly, the real answer is just play Final Girl. It's not scary. Um, yeah. <laughs> but I I thought I was trying to think out of the box with this, and so another like funny answer is I I forget the name of the boxes. So hold on. Maybe actually I'll just consult Jamie. What's yeah, the one? Just tell me. With the um the villagers that come and they try to it's like uh um it's a you're, you're, they're trying to break into your home and like stuff like that. What is that? Oh, one? that is the intruders. The intruders, not villagers. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, intruders. Yeah. So the intruders, instead of them trying to kill you, uh-huh. you're actually an introvert and you just don't want your neighbors to come. <laughs> And they're really nice and forward. And so you're trying to keep them out of your home. And they're just trying to introduce them. Be like car insurance Oh, you're, you're a millennial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And they're like uh, uh, Gen Xer and boomers trying yeah. to introduce themselves. Literally, anytime com- anybody comes to our house, Jeff and I just hide. And it's hard because there's mm-hmm. so many windows. And we'll just like lay, yeah. down. <laughs> we'll just, like, lay down. And we don't know who it is. I don't care. Don't come to my house. Yeah, we'll like hold our dog. We'll be like, shh, shh, shut up, shut up, shh, 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 shh. <laughs> That's hilarious. I think uh, my choice is going to be Once Upon a Full Moon, which is the big bad wolf, which already mm-hmm. has a fairy tale setting, mm-hmm. but I want everything to be almost like stuffed fables esque, where cool. it's like the wolf is like a stuffed. That might dog be more scary and... for Doolin, though. Oh, that's true. <laughs> Sorry, Doolin. <laughs> that's how I make it. Make everything fluffy and yeah. cute and squishy, and then it's fine. It's so fluffy, yeah. I'm gonna die. <laughs> it's so fluffy i'm gonna die all right now for the big one if you could make a final girl feature film what would i love asking people this it's that don't fun. work for van Ryder because we talk about this all the time at work but what would it be who's your killer what's your location and who are your final girls and would you make it a little bit more serious scary or more silly horror because we have some feature films that kind of lean one way and some that lean the other that's true for me, Max, you have one? yeah, I have, I have a couple. I mean, I don't need to spend long on them, but just a couple little things. But uh, I would lean for serious, just as a preference. I, I would try and get it as scary as you can uh, in board game form. The final girls, I'm kind of tackling this answer backwards, sorry. The final girls, That's I don't fine. really know, um, because none of the films that I am kind of drawing from have a real iconic final girl. Um, one of them maybe, but for example, as mentioned at the top of the episode that it was going to come back up, I would love a catacombs esque setting. Um, Mm -hmm. maybe something like, uh, oh gosh, do you, have you ever played like a Harry Potter clue or something like that or city of the great machine, whatever games where the map changes as you're playing, mm, yeah. I think because without getting too much into spoilers, as you'll see with As Above, So Below, there's a bit of a psychological element as well. So, like, things kind of change their locale and stuff as they're in the catacombs. And I think, like, being one place and then drawing a card and it like it's like, oh, you're back where you started a turn ago. And, you, like, what? I think that would be mm-hmm. so interesting. I love the catacombs as a theme. And I think some way to make that, like, make it feel like you are literally getting lost in the catacombs would be a very interesting mm-hmm. way to add to that. Um, I would love a midsummer esque thing because I think horror and daylight are so interesting when paired together. Um, obviously most horror films are at night in the darkness, but yeah. I really just find it so interesting when you're able to make something so, so thrilling and, and terrifying in the middle of the day. Uh, and I think that I would love to see that be tackled in some way, shape or form. And then uh, I would love to see, this is not specific, but some sort of Kaiju esque final girl. I don't know how you even go about that, but you're talking Godzilla, maybe even uh, Cloverfield oh. again. I've never seen Cloverfield, whatever, but um, just something with like a real big bad um and like you're navigating like the the map is zoomed out and you're navigating like a city but like you're you know running blocks at a time or something interesting it would be a departure from what you've got so far but i just think that ways to change those up would be uh really interesting in my opinion um i would love to see a killer that changes every time you play 
in the sense that maybe you shuffle a deck of who the killer is and Mm -hmm. you play one round and oh through deducing and information and things like that you find out that oh jack is the killer and then you play the same game the next time but the way that this i mean obviously the mechanisms i'm not sure how to make this work but i think it could be done (laughs) is that like the next time you play it that's not that's not us that's not that's not my job we're the idea my job but like the next time you play it you can't just go in with like oh, it's going to be Jack again. Uh, you know, like think like mm-hmm. a party, like bodies, 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 clue, whatever, where it's just like a mystery as to who this person's going to be. Uh, and I think that right. would be uh, super interesting. So th- th- that's what I would love to see uh, added into Final Girl in some way, shape or form. Very cool. Doolin, what oh, do you got? Man. So here's the problem. I'm sure, you, I'm sure you've thought of yeah, this. Yeah, <laughs> no, I, I think about this a lot, but what's funny is like, it feels like every time I think of one that it gets added later. Like I was like, yeah. Oh man, it'd be so cool if we had an alien themed one and boom, we got the it. Thing. 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 Yeah. The thing is like one of our favorite movies of all time. Uh, Max and I, the and Shining. we got it. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> so like, I'm going to go <laughs> outside of, of movies. Um, because yeah. all of the movies I've wanted to see have got them pretty much. But, um, one video game that I think, like it, you wouldn't get sued, which is great. Uh, <laughs> if you kind of adapted, <laughs> is um, actually Resident Evil Two, um, which I got. That's actually probably the early or the how do you say this? The last video game that I ever played uh, because <laughs> how do you say the, the last video game I ever played? <laughs> the earliest. I was about to say that, but uh, before Josh left, he and I actually streamed on our um, cable knots. Uh, yeah, cable. Well, it was it was it's on, just table knots on Twitch. Yeah, just on tra- yeah. table knots oh on Twitch, gosh. which yeah. we barely use. So yeah. we're not pushing people to go subscribe or anything. Um, but we played through that entire game, and I just kept thinking this would be great uh, as Final Girl because it's uh, you play as Jill Valentine the whole time, and you're constantly throughout the entirety of the campaign being chased by. Um, I think it's Mr. X or something is what his name is, or Mm -hmm. he's different in that game. But essentially he is unkillable. You can stop Mm -hmm. him for a, like a brief moment, but he continued to come at you until the end of the game or towards the end of the game. Spoilers for those of you that want to play Resident (laughs) Evil 2, a really, really old game. Um, (laughs) But when she's able to like get specific ways to finish him off once and for all, and it was just a very, like, oh, this is this is just fine, like a Final Girl game, but in a video game mm-hmm. form. Um, but to get more uh, silly, I, I was like, what if we had, like, I just I was trying to think of uh, things I love, and The Office came to mind. Um, what if, what if, hear me out, you yeah. have uh, a job like The Office, and you could make it The Office, like, map. Oh, my God. And uh, I thought of the episode where uh, Jim is terrified of Dwight because he's yes. challenged him to a snowball. A snowball, and... yes. And so yeah. uh, you could just make Jim a girl, whatever, to make it uh, work. And um, you, you have to get your job done for that day while avoiding this person who's constantly coming at you with snowballs. That would be, um, <laughs> actually, that would be hilarious. And you, and you can make it du- uh, like basically look like Dwight, and he gets more and right. more annoying as the as the episode goes on. Can right? he be Recyclops? Oh, that'd be perfect, oh, Max. <laughs> even yes. better. Yes. Or what's the uh, what's the the Krampus thing he does? It's like it's not Krampus. Belschnickel. Yes, yes. <laughs> Recyclops and Belschnickel. Yes, you can Those change can be his out. minor powers that he gets throughout the game. Yeah. His evolution. Yeah, 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 yeah. Incredible. But, uh, oh, but I can't think idea. of really anything else, but uh, yeah, those those are my silly ones. Or yeah. you flip it entirely and you it's like what we do in the shadows where you are the vampire the energy vampire. <laughs> sure, yes. Yeah. Or you are the vampire, like in your home, but like there's like reporters trying to get in your home or something like that. It's just like you are the bad guy, but you don't want to be caught Ooh. by the good guy. Hotel Transylvania type thing. Oh Ooh. yeah, yeah. Great. That's movie. a not so scary. Good. My, that, that is, is a great not so my scary. My kids watched about yeah. two minutes of that while they were at the dentist the other day. And I was like, oh, that's such a good movie. And they're like, oh, you've never seen it. And I was like, yeah. oh, my God. 
we have to watch Hotel Transylvania sometime. I think it's wonderful. It's it is so mm-hmm. good. I do not say I... blah 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 <laughs> blah 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 <laughs> blah blah blah. <laughs> Um, I have so, I have like a running list of final girl ideas and as people that are listening already know, and you guys probably already know that I am currently working on a design and I know too many things. So (laughs) the, the one thing that I will say that I have said this on a previous podcast and I still love this idea and it kind of relates to what you were talking about a little bit, Doolin, but I want neighborhood gym as a killer mm. it's just your it's just your neighbor he's just like a nice guy mm. and all of the victims would always go towards him because they're like that's uh, my friendly like neighbor summer of Jim. 84 exactly mm-hmm. exactly like that that's where i got the inspiration yes. from and i'm like all all of the neighbors just think he's great so if he's like killing somebody instead he kills everybody in the space because he can't have any witnesses because mm. he doesn't want his reputation sure. to go down <laughs> anyways i good. just love that's the idea good. of having because, like, if you think about real life killers, yeah, that's more it's terrifying. Just your, it's than... just neighborhood gym. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's just some random dude that lives down the street. Yeah, so, not all gyms. Anyways, that's though. a scary thought. No, sometimes they're Franks mm-hmm. or Freds. Usually or... men, though. Ted's. <laughs> Usually <Yeah>. men, <laughs> definitely, for sure. <laughs> oh, Statistically, amazing. And then the other one, and this would ever. Like never be, we'd never be able to do it. I don't think, but like I, sh- I wrote down like Lake Placid. Oh <laughs> like a yeah, big, big alligator. alligator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and like a swamp or area. Yeah, the same thing, like cool. crawl, uh, which is a movie I still haven't seen, but I want to. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Something like that, where like all there, like the whole map is just covered in like, like three or two foot deep water. <laughs> so like, there's just constantly <laughs> You're just slopping around yeah, in yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. You get stuck. Ugh. Ooh. You could do. That could be good. You know how there's like these rumors about like abandoned Disney World areas that are haunted and stuff like that. That would be cool. Yeah, the old water park. Yeah. Yeah. There's a closed down. The very first water park from Disney was closed down. I think somebody, at least one person, died there, if not multiple. So. Spooky. (laughs) Spooky. Uh, okay, my friends, uh, Max and Doolin have another podcast that they need to film in, <laughs> in a few yeah. minutes. So we we are going to wrap up today's episode. I thank you both so much for joining me on such short notice. You're the bestest. I keep, for some reason, I keep wanting to say say you're the bestest from the westest, but I know you're not from the west, so I can't The beast I can't is say from it. the eastest. Yeah. We're, exactly. We're not even really that is east, exactly though, what either. you are. Hmm. Like... You're very middling. Yeah, true. true. In more ways than one. <laughs> Best Midest coffee ever, of though. The middlest. At Maxwell House. No, don't even. <laughs> don't even. I've gone through so much Kentucky coffee. Like I'm so jittery off of it. You have no I idea. It. I love so it. So good. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for coming. It's all we have for today's episode. I would love for you guys to tell the people where they can find you. You can find us. I don't, on, I don't normally uh, give us our address. My address yeah. out. I don't. Really <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We have a PO box though. Um, no, we don't actually. <laughs> you can find us on YouTube at Table Knots, and you can find us uh, on most socials under the same thing. And then, of course, you can find us on whatever podcast platform you listen to your podcasts on at Board Game Box Office. And uh, we'd love to to see you there. Thanks for joining me, you guys, and I will see everybody again soon. Don't forget to join the Van Rider Games Discord if you haven't already. We're I'm having there. good times in there. Doolin's in there, and people are talking about Final Girl literally all the time in every other game. So there Love you it. go. That's everything that we have. See everybody next time. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye.